So I'm sure you've wondered, are people actually getting faster, specifically are young American sprinters? Well, today I'll statistically answer that question and the results may actually surprise you. Hi everyone, I'm MJP and this is MJP TV. I just wanna thank you for clicking on my video. Hopefully you'll like and subscribe, leave a comment down below, let me know how this goes. Uh, for a little bit of brief history on me, I'm a former D1 sprinter as well as a seven time junior Olympian and I'm here to cover all things track and field. So are young American track athletes actually getting faster? The short answer is yes and no, it depends on the event. And so today we'll be looking at six different events. We'll be looking at the 100, the 200, the 400, the 800, the four by one and the four by four from the past 10 AAU Junior Olympic Games. So before we get started, I did want to lay a little bit of groundwork about what I did to prepare for this video. So I took the finals times from each of the past 10 Junior Olympic Games for our six events. And so what I did, I took those times, averaged them and graphed them. And I removed things such as DQs, DNFs and falls so that way our data wouldn't be too skewed. Okay, with that out of the way, let's get started with the 100 meters. So looking at the young women's 100 meter final, you can clearly see the average times were getting quicker. And so in 2015 and 2018, there are peaks, but this is due to excessive headwind. And so adjusting for those two years, you can see that the women are actually in faster at a quicker rate than originally perceived. And so this bears out looking at the top three finishers on the podium, as well as the champion. And so looking at the men's 100 meter, you can see a similar story. In 2015, there was a major excessive headwind. That's why you see that big spike. And so removing 2015 as well as 2019, because in 2019, there was an illegal win during the finals. You can see the men were also getting quicker at a faster rate than previously perceived. Now looking at the 200 meters. So the young women, it looks like they didn't get any faster or any slower over the past decade, but this is a false perception because numbers do lie. And so once you remove 2015, 2018, all excessive and illegal win times, you can see that the women were getting much, much faster than 200 meters on average. And so looking at the podium finishers, you see a similar story as well as for the champion. And so now looking at the men, the men, they had peaks and valleys, but of course this one peak in 2015 is that same headwind in the finals. And so when you remove that, you can see there's a steep decline in the 200 meters for the men. And so this is seen in the podium and the champion as well. Now looking at the 400 meters uh, for the young women, times are actually steadily increasing, getting slower. And so this is despite a national record being set in 2012 by Kendall Bayes in 5274. And so the average finals time increased along with the average podium time and for our champions. And let's see what the men did. The men actually got quicker, even though they have a lot of peaks and valleys, they are trending downwards. And so there's actually another national record set in 2012 by Aldous Bailey of 45.45. And so looking at the podium, times are getting quicker and for the champions. Now looking at the 800 meters for the young women, times actually steadily increased over the decade, going from 2.12 to 2.16, a four second increase in the average finals time. And so you can see a similar story for the podium times, going from 2.10 to 2.14. And so for the champions, we actually did have a national record set in 2016 by Gabrielle Wilkinson of 207. Despite that time, still had a steady increase in the 800 for the women. Now looking at the men, similar story. For the average finals time, there was a steady increase. Uh, looking at the podium times, they stayed somewhat stagnant, hovering around 152. And for the champions, we actually did have another national record set in 2012 by Charles Jones of 149.78. And so the average 800 meter champion time actually did decrease starting at 152 and ending at 150. Now looking at the four by one for the young women times did decrease again over the decades, starting out for an average finals time around 47.02 and then ending at 46.56 in 2019. And so in 2015, it's a little bit of an outlier because of some excessive win and there was a legal win in other times. And so adjusting for that, you can see it still bears out a similar situation. Times got quicker. Looking at the podium times, it looks like they stay about the same, got a little bit slower. Once you make those adjustments again, they got faster as well. And then looking at the champions, you'll say, oh, they definitely didn't get any faster. Well, once you make the adjustments, similar story. And in 2011, there was actually a national record set in prelims by the Aurora Flyers running 45-32. And so looking at the men, a similar situation happened in 2012 where Track Houston set the national record of 40 flat. And so in 2010, the average finals time was 42.18. And now in 2019, 
the average finals time is 41.39. So the men got much quicker as well. This bears out looking at podium times and the times for champions. Now looking at the 4x4 for the young women, times again did steadily increase in this event. And so they went from averaging around 347 as an average finals time to around 349. And so past 2013, times were decreasing, but in 2016, we've seen a steady increase. And so there was actually another national record set in 2011 by Star Trek program running 340.43. And so looking at the podium times, similar story along with our champions. And so for the young men in the 4x4, you actually see that times are decreasing and there's a major, major drop off in 2016. And so in 2016, we actually saw the lowest average finals time in the entire decade. And so this shows across the podium times and the champion times. So after analyzing our six events, I think it's clear to see and definitive to say that overall, young amateur American sprinters are in fact getting faster. And so I just wanna thank you for spending some time with me today. If you haven't already, like and subscribe and comment down below what your favorite event in track and field is. I'd love to know, as well as future video ideas and other topics you'd want me to cover. And God bless. No, not start. Stop.